ostrich. Miss Snip, the dog groomer, was showing pictures of the dog she groomed to her friend, Mr Menta. Miss Snip has hundreds of dog photos, Elsie. Do come and look. Are those your dogs? No, I just groomed them. A shampoo here and a snip, snip, snip there. I don't have any doggies of my own. Why not? I live in a flat and dogs aren't allowed. <laughs> it's just, I would so love a little doggie. Dry your tears, Miss Snip. I'm going to invent you something that will make you smile. Mr Mentor started doing drawings on his napkin. Come to the lighthouse later and all will be revealed. I promise you it will be spectacular. Mr Mentor doesn't just invent things, he invents words too. Thank you, Mr Mentor. You are so kind. Now, I must go and give some doggies a snip, snip, snip. See you later. Something spectacular. I wonder what it could be. Well, what is it? Yes, Mr Mentor. What are you going to invent? A robo-doggy. Robo-doggy? What's that? Well, it's a robot and a doggy all in one. It'll do all the things that a real dog will do, but it won't need looking after. Yes, this was the day that Mr Mentor invented a robo-doggy for Miss Snip. We drove back to the Mill on the Marsh in Campo. I rushed inside and told Grandpa and Jason all about it. Oh, Miss Snip will love to have a robo-doggy, won't you, Wolfie? I just hope Mr Mentor manages to invent it. You know what usually happens. Come on, Wolfie. Walk time. See you later. Jason's right. Mr Mentor may have some problems inventing a robo-doggy. It's a big job. Are you thinking you might need some help? You've guessed it. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He runs about all over the place. about in the sunny sash train. But today, he decided to fly on Mrs Ostrich. Which is strange, because ostriches can't fly, actually. Bye, Grandpa! I bought you a cupcake. Oh, he's gone for a little lie down. Again! Uncle CJ had no idea that Grandpa was on his way to the lighthouse. Mr Mentor was very busy inventing, so he didn't see Grandpa fly in or climb onto the table. Finished! Oh. Wonder bubble! <laughs> well, it looks the part. It was time for Mr Mentor to test the Robo Doggy and see if it could do doggy things. Ready, Robo Doggy? Prick your ears up! But the Robo Doggy couldn't prick his ears up. Maybe I forgot to invent that bit. <laughs> Let's try something else. <clears throat> Robo Doggy, wag your tail! <laughs> But the Robo Doggy couldn't wag his tail. That's odd. I thought I'd invented the tail wagging bit. But at least I know I invented the whooping. <laughs> Go on, Robo Doggy. Ruff, ruff. But the Robo Doggy couldn't woof woof. He couldn't do anything. I feared as much. This is very disappointing. Just then, Mr. Mentor heard somebody coming. Miss Snip! He went into a panic. Grandpa went into action. He ran over to the Robo Doggy and jumped inside. Oh, Miss Snip, you're very early. <laughs> is that my surprise behind you? Uh, well, it is and it isn't and it isn't quite. Oh, it's a Robo Doggy! A lovely, wobbly Robo Doggy! Mr. Mentor, what can I say? This is the happiest day of my whole life. Oh, good boy, oh, please, good boy. Miss Snip. And look at you. Oh, you gorgeous boy, you. With your shiny coat and your big goggly eyes. Oh, I love you. I love you. Mr. Mentor was worried about the Robo Doggy. He had no idea that Grandpa was inside, trying to fix all the bits that wouldn't work. 
I bet you can do all sorts of doggy things, can't you? I bet you can prick up your ears. Grandpa, pull the earstring. <gasps> yes, you can. You can, you clever boy. And I bet you can wag your little doggy tail, too. Remarkable. Of course, it was Grandpa that was being remarkable. He was making the doggy's tail wag. Then Miss Snip said... And I bet you can woof woof, too. Grandpa could make the doggy's mouth open and shut, but he had to do the woofing himself. Oh, what a lovely, lovely woof that is. Mr. Mental, you are the most remarkable bubble inventor in the universe. Yes, I know. I surprise myself sometimes. And what have we got to do now? Take Robo Doggy for walkie. Oh, how ridiculous. Oh. Oh, Kelsey's ostrich. Oh, last time I saw this was in the cafe. How strange. She must have fallen into my pocket by mistake and then fallen out. Or oh, we can take her back to Elsie later. First, I want to go and show off my new pet. Come on, Robo Doggy. Grandpa was stuck inside the Robo Doggy and there was no way he could get out. Miss Sniff and Mr Mentor walked the Robo Doggy all around Sunny Sands. <laughs> Grandpa was kept very busy. <laughs> Finally, they arrived at the Mill on the Marsh. Miss Snip and Mr Mentor have come to see you, Elsie. I found your Mrs Ostrich. Somehow she made her way to the lighthouse. Really? Thanks. Come and say hello to my new pet. Isn't he fantastic? Grandpa has got to see this. I'll wake him up. No, don't do that. He's uh, very, very tired. He needs to rest. What I didn't know was that Grandpa was resting inside the Robo Doggy. He was so tired from all the ear pricking and the tail wagging and the woof woofing, he'd fallen asleep. So, when Miss Snip told the Robo Doggy to show us his tricks... Come on, show Elsie how you can wag your tail. Nothing happened. He's not wagging. What's the matter, darling? Talk to Mummy. He's not woof-woofing either. Mr Mentor, help! Uh, he seems to be broken. Broken? No! Don't say that! Please calm down, Miss Snip. Why don't we go downstairs and have a cup of tea? Then maybe Mr Mentor will have an idea. I was really worried about Grandpa. How was he going to get back from the lighthouse without Mrs Ostrich? Then Jason came back with Wolfie. Hey, cool Robo Doggy. Everyone we met on our walk was talking about it. It's amazing. Grandpa's got his shrinking cap on and I don't know where he is. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> What's up, Wolfie? <coughs> He's trying to tell us something. <coughs> Wolfie <coughs> woke Grandpa up. I think Grandpa's inside. Grandpa, are you in there? Oh, yes. I must have fallen asleep. I think you better get out now. No, no, I can't. I've got to fix the robo doggy so that it can work by itself. I can't be barking my head off all day. But Miss Snip and Mr. Mentor will be back any minute. I'll go downstairs with Wolfie to keep them occupied. Um, great. Elsie, get me some string. Oh, and uh, some paper clips. <laughs> So, Jason and Wolfie helped keep everyone out of the sitting room. Oh, Wolfie, I love you. And I helped Grandpa fix the Robo Doggy. Here's your paper clip. Be careful, Grandpa. All done. Bring it. Now come out, please. And now take your cap off, quick. Oh. I was right about it being a big job, but we did it. It was teamwork. Teamwork! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Grandpa sat down just in time. 
Oh, Grandpa, you're up. How marvellous. Mm. Yes, I wanted to see the robo-doggy doing all his doggy tricks. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid he's broken. Oh, well, maybe the invention was just having a little rest. Oh, yes, they do that sometimes. Oh, try again, Miss Tip. OK. Might as well, I suppose. Prick your ears up. I love you. Now, whack your tail. He's wagging, he's wagging. Now, give Mummy a lovely, lovely woof woof. <coughs> Mr. Mentor, you fixed him. Must have been that cup of tea. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, I love you. <laughs> Because it's sunny and it's sandy and it's right by the sea. And today there was something very exciting going on at the beach. A very exciting something organised by Mr Whoops and Mr Mentor the Inventor. What's all this then? Go on, give us a clue. Well, it's a beach treat for the children. Sounds great. What sort of beach treat? All we can say is it will be Brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> I must go and tell Josh and Elsie. I'm so excited. So am I. <laughs> yes, this was the day of the Brilliant Beach Treat. Uncle CJ came straight back and told us all about it. A beach treat for the children? I wonder what that could be. No idea. All I know is it's going to be brilliant. Mr. Mentor and Mr. Whoops together. An inventor and someone who is always having little accidents. Perhaps I should go and help. Not necessary, Grandpa. You'd probably just get in the way. Why don't you just stay here and have a little lie down? Uh, yes, yes, maybe I will. We both knew what Grandpa was thinking. I want to make sure this beach treat is a success. Mr. Whoops and Mr. Mentor are bound to need some help. Especially from someone small. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks? He runs and jumps about, and I just can't catch him. He can get into things, and he can get under things. But most amazing of all is that his magic can make things go. Like Jason's doing Ostrich and makes her fly, which is odd because ostriches can't fly actually. But today he took the helicopter. See you later. Mr. Whoops had set up a Punch and Judy theatre. Oh, bravo, Mr. Mentor! <laughs> oh, Mr. Whoops, you and your little accidents. While Mr. Mentor was helping Mr. Whoops, Grandpa flew onto the beach and landed out of sight. And now, you'll have to explain. I've absolutely no idea what a Punch and Judy puppet show is. <laughs> ah, the treats a Punch and Judy show. Excellent. This is Mr. Punch. And this is Judy. Oh, Judy. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. And they have a friend called Joey the Clown. And there's uh, Toby the Dog next door. Oh, how ridiculous. Oh. And there's a policeman. Oh, a policeman. Yes. And a crocodile. Oh, a crocodile. Too. Oh. And there's always sausages. Oh. 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 Where did they go? The sausages nearly hit Grandpa. Oh, where have they gone? I don't know. I mean, oh, just, oh. I've lost my twirly whirly badge. Never mind that now. We've got to find the sausages. Grandpa could see that they were never going to find the sausages, so he decided to help them. <laughs> then Mr. Whoops turned round. He was about to see.
see Grandpa. Oh, no. So, he had to hide in the basket of puppets. Over there, over there. You missed them, Mr. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> right, now we've got to get on with practising the puppet show. Uh, did you say we? I thought I was just putting up the theatre booth. Oh, no. We have to make the puppets walk and talk, see? Like this. That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's what Mr. Punch always says. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, I'm too shy. No, no, it's impossible, Bubble. But I can't do all the puppets at the same time. I'll have to have help. Mr. Mentor had a Wonder Bubble idea. I've suddenly had a Wonder Bubble idea. I'll invent a way of making a puppet walk and talk all by itself. Oh! <laughs> It'd be very Wonder Bubble if you could. But you'll need to hurry up, because the children will be here soon for the show. It'll be easy peasy, Ozo. I can invent it in no time at all. No time at all. But Grandpa wasn't so sure. Back home, we were worried about Grandpa. Don't you ask. Don't you ask. Don't you ask. Uncle CJ, please, can we go to the beach early? In case Mr Mentor and Mr Whoops need any help. Please, 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 please. please, please Uncle yes, CJ. good idea. Yes. We'll go in Queenie. <laughs> Mr. Mentor was trying to work out how to invent a puppet that would walk and talk by itself. Mr. Whoops was warming up and Grandpa was watching them. That's the way to... Oh, no. Too silly. <coughs> That's the way to... Oh, no. Too grumpy. <coughs> That's the way to... Oh, whoops! Oh, that's not the way to do it. I've dropped my glasses in the box of puppets. How could I be so clumsy? Mr. Whoops <laughs> put his hand in the box of puppets and felt around. And then this happened. Are you Judy or Joey the Clown? Oh, dear. I really do need my glasses. Oh, oh, oh. I've got it. I've thought of a way of making a puppet walk and talk all by itself. Wonderful. Oh! They danced around, very excited. And then this happened. Oh, oh dear. Oh, I've lost my swirly spiral stick. And where's my notebook? Well, don't look at me. We turned up just in time. What about Roland? Oh, what's up? Are you okay? We were looking around for Grandpa, and then we saw him. You're doing a Punch and Judy show. Well, I'm trying to, but it's all gone wrong. Mr. Mentor was supposed to be helping me, but... I have been helping. I have invented a way of making a puppet walk and talk all by itself. Wow! That's amazing! How does it work? Oh, I've forgotten. Forgotten? You can't have forgotten. Well, I have. And it's all your fault. You and your little accidents. It's not my fault. We wanted it's to talk to Grandpa, so we had to get everyone out of the way. Please don't argue. Be friends. Sorry. Why don't you go and have a nice cream sundae together? That's a fab ridiculous idea. An ice cream sundae might help me remember my inventions. An ice cream sundae might stop me having little accidents. <laughs> we can but hope. <laughs> so off they went to Miss Smiley's cafe. I'll fix the puppet theatre. It probably just needs banging back together. There's a hammer in the beach chat. Good thinking, Josh. There's nothing else for it. The three of us are going to have to perform this puppet show ourselves. Easy peasy also. Found the hammer. So Uncle CJ fixed the puppet theatre. I'll climb into the Mr. Punch puppet and do all his walking and talking. That's the way to do it. And no one will know it's you. Just then, we heard our friends arriving. Oh, wow! I can't wait! Hello, everyone. Are you here for the Brilliosa Beach Treat? Yes! Sit down there. We're nearly ready for you. We took the puppet out of the basket. Grandpa jumped out and got inside Mr Punch. What are we going to do now? Mr Mentor and Mr Whoops aren't here. It's OK. We're going to do the puppet show instead. What? Just the two of you? Okay. It was time for the Brilioso Beach Treat to begin. Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> 
I'm Mr. Punch. I'm Judy. And I'm Toby the dog. <laughs> Jay, I'm going to cook some sausages for Toby. Now, I want the sausages. Give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> then, Mr. Whoops and Mr. Mensa came back. What's going on? Who's doing the puppet show? We are! <laughs> oh, lovely sausages. I'm going to fry them up for my breakfast. That's the way to do it. So if you're both here, who's puppeteering Mr Punch? Yes. Who? This was a disaster. Everyone was going to know about Grandpa. Then Mr Mentor said... It's my Wonder Bubble invention, of course. I've invented a walking, talking puppet without even realising it. Yeah. Mr. Mentor, you're the most remarkable inventor in the universe! Grandpa <laughs> had saved the day! As soon as the Punch and Judy show was over, Grandpa flew back to the mill on the marsh. And landed in the meadow. He took off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. We took off our life jackets and rushed over to talk to Grandpa. We made it back to Grandpa. Oh, yes, and didn't we do well, the three of us? It was totally teamwork. Teamwork. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're up and about, Grandpa. Guess what the Brilliosa Beach Street was? A Punch and Judy show. And Josh and Elsie performed it all by themselves. All by themselves? Well, with the talking, walking Mr. Punch, that is. Mr. Mentor invented him for Mr. Whoops, and then Mr. Whoops gave him to us to say thank you for helping. Show Grandpa, Elsie. Oh, you see. Oh, we can have a game with him later. That's the way to do it. Not bad, Grandpa. Not bad. Puppet's better. <laughs> ready to go on a nature ramble with Mr. Yompa Stompa and lots of other Sunny Sands friends up Misty Moor Mountain. It's nearly ten o'clock. Mr. Yompa Stompa's running late as usual. Have you got your water bottle, Josh? Yep. Just then, Great Aunt Retta, Grandpa's <laughs> sister, came in. Oh, I ate that squeaky sausage. Here's your lunchbox. It gets pretty chilly up that mountain, you know. How many pairs of socks have you got on? Uh, Excuse me, I'm in charge of Josh today, thank you. I'm in charge of everything. I've got hotel guests coming at 12 o'clock and the things I have to do by then would make your hair curl. Poor Grandpa was going to have to put up with Great Aunt Loretta on duty. Right, I'm glad that's understood. I wondered what she'd put in my lunchbox. Great Aunt Loretta makes the most disgusting food. <gasps> Cauliflower and treacle sandwiches. I might have known. Come on, let's go downstairs and find you something that you can eat. Just then we heard... Riddle TV! <gasps> Mr Yumper Stomper was here at last. That's me. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I got distracted by a squirrel and forgot what I was supposed to be doing. Look. Mr. Yompa Stomper is always forgetting what he's supposed to be doing. Hi, Mr. Yompa Stomper, we have to hurry. Calm down, Josh. Oh, it's always good to see your smiling little face. <laughs> it's always smiling, Loretta. Happy as a lark, I am. Riddle dee wee, riddle dee wee. It's a rumbler's life for me. Up in the mountains, down in the plains. But we don't have time for song and dance today. I'm busy. And I'm all ready for my ramble. New maps, new boots, new uh, compass, mirror and a whistle. <coughs> Great gear, Mr Yomper Stomper. Right, Josh, come and get your backpack. They'll all be waiting for you at Misty Moor Mountain. Excuse me, Grandpa. I'm on duty, remember? And before Mr Yomper Stomper goes off on his ramble, he can help me out. I'm rushed off my feet, I am. Here. Oh, Come on, Josh. Get 
Peggy. <laughs> Josh, sausages, some cheese, and Miss Smiley's groovy grape delight. Thanks, Grandpa. Oh, we must chivy Mr. Yopper stumper along. He gets so easily distracted. I wouldn't be surprised if he's forgotten why he's come. And Grandpa was right. Outside, Mr. Yomper Stomper was beginning to enjoy pegging out Great Aunt Loretta's washing. And he'd completely forgotten why he'd come. Waterfall valleys and hills, yumping and stomping through England and Wales, rambling and gambling free. It really is time to go, Mr. Yomper Stomper. Oh, yes, I quite forgot. Sorry, Josh. Excuse me. I haven't quite finished with Mr. Yomper Stomper yet. Let me remind you, I am on duty here, and everybody has to do what I say. Whee! Rambling and gambling free! <laughs> She's not going to listen to me. She's on duty. What can we do then, Grandpa? Well, if I can't get you off on your ramble when I'm big, maybe I can when I'm small. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know when Grandpa shrinks, there's no stopping him. He can run faster than a cheetah, and he can jump higher than a kangaroo. He can fly on Gordon the toy seagull, and he can drive around in my cousin Jason's car. But today, he ran outside, and he hid on Misty Yomper Stomper's backpack. Great Aunt Loretta was all giddy from spinning round. Suddenly, Grandpa did this. Then he hid again. I think it was my whistle. Maybe it's trying to tell me something. Don't be so silly. Whistles can't blow themselves. It was you, wasn't it? <laughs> While Mr. Yomp Stumper fanned and calmed Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa climbed up the washing line. Then he did this. Time for a ramble. Time for a ramble. I think your sock just told me it was time for a ramble. That's what I'm here for, of course! Oh, Mr. Yopper Stumper, you're a right one. First you say the whistle blows itself, and now you tell me I've got a talking sock. Help me up. Oh. Right, come on. More jobs to do indoors. Sorry, Josh. Be as quick as I can. We'll have to try something else. I've gone for a little lie down, I suppose. No help at all, as usual. Now then, Mr. Yopper Stop. Just then, Grandpa came inside. There's here, and here, and a oh. And here. Oh. And uh, Well, come on. I'll be five minutes, Josh. Oh, come on, come on. I've had an idea, Josh. Maybe we can hurry him up by making him think it's later than it actually is. Right. <laughs> and Grandpa changed the clock from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Catch me! Now for the clock upstairs. You wait here. OK. Up he went. <laughs> Upstairs, Mr. Young Stopper and Great Aunt Loretta having fun. <laughs> Just then, Grandpa arrived in Upsy Downsy. Good grief. Grandpa jumped down, ran across the table, then got into the Sunny Sands grandfather clock and changed the time from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. He got out of the clock as quickly as he could, ran across the floor and hid. Look at the time, Loretta. I almost forgot my ramble with Josh. I should be at Misty Mama. And Great Aunt Loretta loaded up Misty Yump Stumper. Oh, she's never going to let him go. <laughs> she filled Upsy Downsy with other things and sent it down. Then she suddenly had an idea. I just shut that door so the dust can't get in. This is going to be a problem. This was a disaster. Upsy Downsy had gone downstairs and all the doors were shut. Grandpa was stuck in the sitting room. Aha! But Grandpa, being Grandpa, had an idea. He 
jumped off the shelves, got into my helicopter and flew up the chimney. While Great Aunt Loretta showed Mr Yomp Stomper where to put the muck sucker, Grandpa flew in. When they come in, Josh, pretend to turn on the radio. OK? OK. Let's listen to the radio. Oh, good idea. Let's have some music while you work. <laughs> now, At that start. moment, Grandpa started to pretend to be on the radio. And it's just gone 12 o'clock. My, my, doesn't time fly. 12 o'clock, my word. And today I have Gavin with me in the studio. Hello, Gavin. Hello. Now, Gavin loves going on nature rambles, don't you, Gavin? I love nature rambles. So do I. And that's why I'm here and we are going to be late. Just, we want you some music. Not boring old talk. Find some music. So, I had to turn the radio on to find music. Oh, it's, it's Rick the Rocking Rainbow. Oh, it's my favourite. Come on, Mr Yomper Stomper. Strut your stump. Honey, you're my toast. You're the apple. I have to get to my phone, Josh. It's upstairs. So, while Great Aunt Loretta and Mr Yomp Stomper danced, I picked Grandpa up and put him in my pocket. And upstairs we went. Oh, the time! The guests! Oh, they'll be in for you, Hermes, and I'm not ready! Yes, Abby, and I've got to go now. The other ramblers will wonder where we are. You can't go. I need you to help me. Upstairs, I was helping Grandpa with his plan. I dialed the number of the mill on the marsh. Oh. Mill on the marsh, Loretta speaking. How may I help you? Yes. Who? Who? Oh, hello. Uh, we, we were supposed to have arrived this afternoon, but I'm afraid we're unable to come because my wife is... Uh, Grandpa needed an idea. It's had a baby. Oh. Yes, she's had a baby. Right. Well, actually, I'm quite glad you can't come because we're not ready for you. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, Mr. Yumper Stumper, what a relief. Guests have cancelled. Oh. Oh. I am going for a little lie down. And I am going on my ramble with Josh. Josh! Josh! Come off, Grandpa, quick! We did it, Josh. You're going to get your ramble after all. I call it teamwork. Teamwork? <laughs> <laughs> Ready, Miss Dion, stop her? Rickle DV, I most certainly am. Loretta's gone for a little lie down. The guests have cancelled. Have they? Oh dear, what a shame. That'll be the guests. Will you be OK, Grandpa? Of course I will. I'm on duty. Sunny Sands is called Sunny Sands because it's sunny and it's sandy and it's right by the sea. I love Miss Smiley's cafe and Mr Whips's shop. Mr. Mentor's Lighthouse, Bob's Boat in the Harbour, but my favourite place of all is the Mill on the Marsh. Today, Elsie had gone sailing, so I was with Grandpa. We were playing with my action figures, and Grandpa was being Mighty Mike. Look, Josh, there's a monkey in trouble out at sea. I must go and rescue him. Auntie Jules was cleaning our boat, the Queen of Sunny Sands. But we all call her Queenie for short. I wish you could shrink and dress up as Mighty Mike, Grandpa. Just for fun. Oh, I'd love to, but I never shrink just for fun. There always has to be a good reason. Suddenly, we heard squawking. Bungle bird. Better look out for our toys, Josh. You know, bungle birds like shiny things. OK, Grandpa. Just then, one of our friends arrived in the meadow. Hello, folks. Oh, Mr. Yomper Stomper. Yes, it was Mr. Yomper Stomper. A riddle dee ree, a riddle dee ree. It's a rambler's life for me. Up in the mountains and down in the dales, rivers and waterfalls, valleys and vales, yomping and stomping through England and Wales, rambling and gambling free. <laughs> the bungle bird was singing along. I'm not a fan of bungle birds always stealing shiny things. 
So what brings you over here then, Mr. Yomper Stomper? Um, I've forgotten. He is always forgetting. I know. I wanted you to meet someone. Look, a bear on a hike. <laughs> oh, bear on a hike. Meet Mighty Mike. Hello, Mighty Mike. Oh, yes, I can see they are going to be great friends. <laughs> yes, this was the day to play with Mighty Mike and a bear on a hike. Lovely, isn't he? Got him in Sunny Sands Market. Oh, I'd love to go to Sunny Sands Market today. Going to markets, it's my latest hobby. Well, you must go straight away then, catch all the bargains. I can't. I've got a whole list of things to do. Tell you what, I'll do your jobs for you. You can go to the market. Really? Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr Yomper Stomper. Come inside, I'll show you the list. It was so kind of Mr Yomper Stomper to offer to help. Tidy the balcony up there. <laughs> Right. Wash up the breakfast things in there. Right. And water the plants from the water butt right here. No problem. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr Yomper Stomper. See you in a bit. Yeah, have a lovely time. <laughs> what job do you fancy first? Tidy the balcony? That's exactly what I thought. Come along, then. So Mr Yomper Stomper went onto the balcony. Hello, Grandpa. Hello, Josh. Hello, Mr Yomper Stomper. What? What? Oh, yes. Hello, Mighty Mike. Hello, bear on a hike. Go on, wave at Mighty Mike. He's your new best friend. Just then, the bungle bird flew by. Come on, Josh, let's get this stuff inside before the bungle bird gets it. Mr Yomp Stomper was so busy trying to get away from it that he did this. He held the bear over the balcony and it fell into the water butt. Help! Help! Whoops. Oh, I've lost my bear! <laughs> oh, dear. The butt's full of water and the bear's right at the bottom. What are we going to do, Grandpa? We need some expert help. Has Mighty Mike got any diving gear? Yes. Why? Because you can't jump into a water butt without diving gear. He won't mind if I borrow it. But first, I must put this on. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. Grandpa! He runs and jumps about all over the place. And it's impossible to catch him. Sometimes he zooms about in Jason's toy car. Sometimes he drives the Sunny Sand train. Or sometimes he dresses up to solve problems. Like this. Yes, and can. this. And this. Captain Dumbletwit. And today dressed up as Mighty Mike. I'm ready. Then, Mr. Yomba Stomp came into the courtyard. My bear! Where's my bear? He fell into the water butt. Oh, no! It's all your fault, Mr. Bondlebird. Don't worry, Mr. Yomba Stomper. Mighty Mike will rescue your bear. He's got proper diving equipment. Mighty Mike, really? He must be an amazing toy. I didn't want Mr. Yomp Stomper to see that it was actually Grandpa. Stand well back, please. I put Grandpa into the water butt. Luckily, he had all the proper equipment with him so he could go in the water safely. And in no time at all, up popped the bear. My little mascot! Oh, I must go and tell Grandpa. Uh, not a good idea. Sorry, he's having a little lie down, is he? I won't disturb him then. Let's go and dry you out. As soon as Mr Yump Stomp had gone, I took Grandpa out of the water. And I put him down on the ground. Oh, I did it! Right, let me get changed. Uh, not here. Mr. Yomp Stomper might see you. Oh, you're right. Let's go back to the meadow. Good idea. Mr. Yomp Stomper dried his bear with a tea towel. There. That's better. But I need to keep you nice and warm. I know. He tore off a piece of kitchen foil and wrapped him up. Look at you. In your shiny blanket. You look like a proper bear on a hike now. Come and sit outside in the sunshine. Grandpa had got out of his wetsuit and now he was wearing Mighty Mike's flying suit. It fits perfectly. But why have you put it on? You're not planning on doing any more rescuing, are you, Grandpa? You never know, Josh. 
Always be prepared. Anyway, I'm rather enjoying being Mighty Mike. You stay outside in your shiny blanket. Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to be doing those little jobs. Mr. Yomp is always forgetting. He rushed inside. But there was a problem. The Bunglebird had spotted the bear in his shiny blanket. And you know how Bunglebirds love shiny things. He swooped down and grabbed the bear on a hike. The Bunglebird flew into the meadow. Oh, no! Help! Help! The Bunglebird's got the bear! Looks like it's taking him into his nest in the nut tree. I'll fetch a ladder! We don't need a ladder. We need Mighty Mike and his rescue helicopter. But, Grandpa... Oh, once Grandpa's got an idea in his head, there's no stopping him. First, he scared off the Bunglebird. The helicopter landed on a branch. <gasps> Grandpa! Mr. Yumpstorm is coming with the ladder. He might see you. Hide! So Grandpa hid. And just in time, too. Hold the ladder for me, Josh. I'm coming, little bear. I'm coming! <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh, I'll pass him down, Josh. There you go. Got him. Yeah, go. Did you know Mikey Mike's helicopter's up here too? I know! Yeah. Amazing that you can fly a toy all the way up a tree and make it land too. Yeah, but, but where's Mighty Mike? He should be flying the helicopter. Of course, Mighty Mike was still hiding in the big nut tree. Well, Mr Yompa Stomper didn't see me. <laughs> Let's get this shiny thing off you so the bungle birds don't get you again. I really needed Mr. Yump Stump to go. So I said, Have you forgotten those little jobs that you have to do for Auntie Jules? Oh, yes. Thank you, Josh. So off he went to do the little jobs for Auntie Jules, which meant I could talk to Grandpa. We have to get you down, Grandpa. I know, but it's too far to jump. Then I had a brilliant idea. It's OK. You're wearing a parachute. Am I? Yes, that's what's in the backpack. If you use the parachute, you'll be safe. Well, I've never done a parachute jump before, but there's always a first time for everything. I'll be here to catch you, just in case. So, Grandpa got ready to jump, and I counted. One, two, three, jump! Grandpa jumped, and the parachute opened. Whee! Mike on a parachute. He was in that tree after all. Oh, that Josh does have some amazing toys. But you're still my favourite little bear. Oh, yes, you are. Soon, Grandpa was back in his own clothes. Come on, quick. Oh, that parachute jump was fantastic. You had fun being Mike tonight, didn't you, Grandpa? I did, but I didn't do it just for fun. I rescued the bear from the water butt and I scared off the bongle bird, but I couldn't have done it without you. Teamwork? Teamwork. Then, Auntie Jules came back from Sunny Sands Market with lots of shopping. You two still playing with Mighty Mike? Oh, yes, we never tire of Mighty Mike. <laughs> Miss Jump Stomper came out to see Auntie Jules. I am ever so sorry I haven't managed to get any of your jobs done. Oh, never mind. I didn't really expect you would. <laughs> My little bears had all sorts of adventures. Luckily, Josh's amazing toys came to the rescue. Oh? What amazing toys? You know, Mighty Mike diving and parachuting and flying his helicopter. <laughs> Thank you, Mighty Mike. Any time, bear on a hike. You can't get that sort of thing down the market, I can tell you. Oh! <laughs> Certainly can. Josh had gone surfing with friends, so I was playing with Grandpa. We got out all Jason's old animal puppets. Look out, Jason. It's a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> Brussels sprouts and pilchards in brown. Just then, we heard a horrible noise coming up the stairs. Be my dream. 
A true love of mine. It was great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. You're in a very good mood today. I've made a new friend at Miss Smiley's Cafe, a very dishy gentleman from Australia. Australia? His name's Vincent. He's staying with Bob on his boat and, listen to this, he's invited me on a date. Date? What sort of a date? A dream date. Afternoon tea on the boomerang. Yes, this was the day we found out all about Great Aunt Loretta's dream date. Where's my deodorant? Oh. He, um, <coughs> he invited you too, Grandpa, but I said you were having one of your little lie down. Oh, you did, did you? So I said I'd bring Elsie, and I've made some green gloop and a sardine and strawberry trifle. You can't turn up empty handed, can you? Come on, Elsie, get your life jacket on. We'll be going in Queen. Green gloop and sardine and strawberry trifle. Poor Vincent. Poor Elsie. You're not thinking about going along too, are you, Grandpa? Because if you are, you've missed the boat. Well, that's all right. I shall be going by plane. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. When Grandpa shrinks, he gets up to all sorts of mischief. He runs about so fast nobody can catch him. He goes zoom, zoom in the car and chuff, chuff, chuff in the Sunny Sands train. But today, he was taking the plane. Call me if you need any help. Thanks. I will. <laughs> While we were on our way to Bob's boat, the boomerang, Uncle Vincent was in the bathroom getting ready for our visit. Bob was not looking very happy. Here, take this. <laughs> Make sure the sardines don't fall off. I, I didn't know you were coming over, Loretta. Oh, yes. Your uncle has invited me for afternoon tea. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, he's in the, um... The... Oh, in the... Great Aunt Loretta never says the word toilet out loud because she thinks it's rude. <laughs> Vincent! Guess who's here? Yes, this was Uncle Vincent. Loretta! You yeah, made it! Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for the world! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, come, this is my great niece, Elsie. Pleased to meet you, Elsie. I've made you a strawberry and sardine trifle. Bonza! Old makers, beetroot and custard sangers. Oh, Bonza! <laughs> What's a sanger? It's what you good people call a sandwich. Come on, Loretta, you can help me slap on the margarine. <laughs> Luckily, Grandpa was on his way. He landed on the deck of the boomerang. So, Uncle Vincent and Great Aunt Loretta were making sangers, and I was playing snap with Bob, when suddenly I saw Grandpa. He was running along a rope. Snap! Ha! You missed that one. I was really pleased to see him. <sighs> A bit tricky having Uncle Vincent stay. He's taken over my boat. He cooks disgusting food. And he snores like a wallaby. <laughs> I don't want to be unfriendly, but well, we should go back to Australia. Oh dear, poor Bob. I've never been to Australia. It sounds bonza. <laughs> it is Loretta. Pop weather, great music, fantastic beaches. There's just one thing that I can't stand about Australia. Really? What's that? Crocodiles. I scare the living daylights out of me. Snap, snap, snap. That's why I'm never going back. What do you say? You're never going back to Australia? No. Nope. I'm going to live in sunny sands forever. That's the best news I've heard all year. <laughs> exactly. Whereabouts in sunny sands? Well, here on this boat, of course. With you, mate. Excuse me, I, uh, I, uh, I, I need some fresh air. <laughs> we must celebrate. Ooh, open up the green. Glue. Grandpa found a better hiding place. He wanted to talk to me. I'd come to help Uncle Vincent, but the person who really needs help is Bob. I've got to do something. Like what? 
Well, if I can remind Uncle Vincent of how wonderful Australia is, maybe he'll start getting homesick. I get it. If he feels homesick, he'll go back home. You're so clever, Grandpa. Oh, Elsie, come on. Come and have your sanga. I had to leave Grandpa to get on with his plan. He ran over to the little heating stove. He sat on the tap and turned it up really, really high. Ooh, beetroot and custard, yum. <laughs> Don't nibble, Elsie, you're not a rabbit. And soon the boat felt really hot. Ooh. Is it me or is it hot in here all of a sudden? Ooh. Oh, I'm sweating all over. Ooh. Good job I put on all that deodorant. <laughs> it is hot, but I love it. The hotter the better. Reminds me of Australia. Does it make you want to go home? Oh, for sure, Elf. I can't go back, sleep because of the crocodiles. Snap, snap, snap. Bother, I'd forgotten about the crocodiles. Have some trifle. That'll take your mind off them. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa had another plan now. He ran over to the record player and started pointing. He wanted me to play some music. Can I play some music? Help yourself, Ilse. Oh, yum! As trifle as bonza. Let's hope this does it. Waltzing Matilda. That's my favourite Aussie song. Waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda. Yuck. Oh, my beloved Oz. <laughs> it brings tears to my eyes. Does it make you want to go home? Oh, too right it does. Uh, that's enough of that, Elsie. Switch it off. I'll be on the next plane if it wasn't for them crocodiles. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. Grandpa had another plan. Of course. But he needed my help. Elsie, I want you to call Jason. I'm sure Bob won't mind if you borrow his phone. And so I called <laughs> Jason. Okay. Well, if that's what Grandpa wants, I'll see you in a bit. picked up the crocodile puppet and rode to Sunny Sands Harbour as fast as he could. Now, we were all paying snap. Great Aunt Loretta and Vincent were cheating. So I was really pleased when Jason came in. Snap! Oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Jason! Say hello. W welcome, welcome. Come and join us. <laughs> While nobody was looking, I took out the crocodile puppet and put it on the floor for Grandpa. Grandpa got inside the crocodile and then he started doing this. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. Ah, it's snap, a crocodile. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. So Jason picked up the crocodile and pretended to get rid of it. <laughs> Uncle Vincent was so scared he went to hide in the bathroom. Jason put the crocodile down. Well, that seemed to do the trick. I'll be off then. See you back at the mill, Grandpa. Grandpa jumped up the steps and went off to find the plane. It's OK. You can come out now. The crocodile has gone. Thanks, mate. Good job you were on the spot. Right, I'm getting out of here. Vincent, stop making such a fuss. It was only a baby one. Then Bob came back from his walk. What's going on? Y you're leaving? Too right I am. This place is swarming with crocodiles. C crocodiles? <laughs> ah, there's no crocs in sunny sense. There was one on the boat right here just now. Going snap, snap, snap. If I'm going to get attacked by crocodiles, I might as well go back to Australia. Oh, right. Yeah, maybe you should, Uncle Vincent. I mean, you do love the place. Come on, here, I'll help you pack. Come on, Elsie. Come on, Jason. Time we went. Ah. Grandpa flew home as fast as he could. Ah! He jumped out of the plane, took off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. We came home too. Well, did the plan work? Of course. Vince has gone back to Australia and Bob's got his boat back. Teamwork, I call it. Teamwork! Teamwork. <laughs>
What a disaster! Oh, it's a good job you didn't come, Grandpa. You'd have only made things worse. So the dream date didn't work out, then? Nightmare date, more like. I've gone right off that, Vincent. It's not my type at all. We've got nothing in common. And he made such a fuss about a tiny baby crocodile. Even the little ones can be very scary. Snap that, snap! Don't you start. <laughs>
and you have more fun if you go slower. You see more of sunny sand. But, Wizzy William said, faster, faster, I want to go faster. <laughs> Soon we arrived at Mr. Whoops' shop, where Mr. Whoops was trying to get all his deliveries into the storeroom. It's great! Look at that! Wizzy William couldn't stop whizzing. Oh, I love this! Oh, I do like to see enthusiasm! <laughs> I'd put Grandpa down and he was watching. <laughs> this shop is fantastic! Oh, look! Careful, William! Oh, you'll be having little accidents like me! Oh, what? Oh, steady now, Mr. Whoops. Shall I take this to the store? Thank you, CJ. And you can start organising everything in there. I'll bring the rest in. Oh. <laughs> How does this work? Well, I had a quick talk to Grandpa to see if he had a plan. What he needs is some soothing music. That'll calm him down. Get him to come over here and open the box, OK? OK. Come and open this box, William. <laughs> Why would I want a tinkly ballerina? You're really funny, Josh. Mr. Whoops up, I had another chat with Grandpa. OK, the ballerina wasn't my best idea. But watch. <laughs> Whoa! Look at this! Wonder how it works? Grandpa had climbed up the shelf and was behind the toy. He started to make it work. Whoa! It's doing stuff all by itself. How does it do that? And he turned the toy round to see how it worked. Grandpa escaped just in time. That's weird. It was like there was someone behind it, turning the wheels. Go on. Start moving again, then. How do you work, eh? Wait a minute. Look at that car! Whoops! <laughs> And while Wizzy William helped clear up the mess, I went to talk to Grandpa. Did you see how he was with that toy? If he really concentrates on something, he calms down. We've just got to try and find something he is really, really interested in. Um, aha! Keep him busy. OK. And Grandpa jumped, ran and climbed up onto a big moonscape toy. And I guessed what Grandpa was going to do. Whoa! <gasps> Let's play frisbee! Catch Josh! Oh, not in the shop. You'll have no end of little accidents if you throw a frisbee about. <laughs> Mr. Whoops, can you come and show me where the building bricks go? I'm on my way! <laughs> How about this? Awesome! And William swivelled round with the telescope and saw this. Out came an astronaut toy. Only, of course, it wasn't a toy. It was Grandpa. This is the best toy in the universe. Look, Josh, look. It's an actual moving astronaut. It's floating like it's in space. Wow. It's amazing. Did you see that? He did this. We can play astronauts when we get back to the mill. And Wizzy William started to copy Grandpa. Mr. Whoops? <laughs> Do you have any astronaut dressing up costumes? Oh, I believe I had some come in only today. All unpacked. Goodness, it's very calm in here. Mm. We're going to be astronauts walking on the moon like him. Grandpa stood very still. This is how we have to move really slowly. Well, that's the best idea you've had all day, William. I'll just go and put all this rubbish out in the bin. Come with me, and we'll find some spacesuits for you. <laughs> beep, 
Beep. <laughs> While we were all gone, Grandpa ran into the rocket and put the spacesuit back on the toy astronaut. How cool is this? It's wonderful. I got as close as I could to Grandpa and he jumped into my helmet. Right, back to the mill, you two, for a lovely, slow afternoon. <laughs> and home we went. When we got back, William went straight upstairs with Uncle CJ to set up our spaceman game. I stayed in the kitchen. Grandpa jumped out of my helmet. Get off quick, Grandpa! Oh, we calmed him down, Josh. We did it. We found a game that made him go slow. Teamwork, I call it. Teamwork! <laughs> Meanwhile, Uncle CJ had been helping Wizzy William and soon the whole sitting room looked like a moonscape and we were being spacemen. I like the new slow spaceman, William. A lot. I don't want to be Wizzy anymore. This is really cool. Oh, yes. Much better to be like Grandpa. He never runs about. Oh, no. Never. 